All right, traders, Damien here. Today we're gonna to talk about putting it all together, taking the structure analysis, the order flow analysis, the supply and demand zones, and the bar by bar, and putting all the pieces together to use this trading methodology in a way that gives you a huge trading advantage over most traders and even over some of the institution traders. Okay, so the biggest thing we want to identify is the strength of the market and the weakness of the market as trading in the strength of the market proven by our structure analysis puts us at an advantage of over 70 percent of the time your trade is going to be profitable okay now it is important to also since we're starting to talk about trading opportunities and engage in the market that you learn to detach yourself from the value of money this is important because when you take a loss Okay, and you lose 20 points or 30 points, and that ends up being two or three thousand dollars if you're trading a high uh, position size. That you don't allow that or those emotions or that pain to influence your next trading decision because your trading decision is not going to be made on the technical information and on the skill that you have. So, more than likely, that next decision making uh, process is going to be tainted and it's probably going to cause you more money okay so have a max loss for the day once you hit it walk away because it only becomes even more difficult as the losses pile up to make conscious technically based decisions versus emotional ones okay so I don't care whether I'm trading one contract 10 contract 20 contracts my decision making process is the same as I don't take my last loss or those emotions into my next trade. There's always an emotional component to trading that you cannot completely remove, but staying as mechanical as possible in your decision-making process and not, al not allowing the past influence the future uh, in a better situation for profitability, okay? So now we want to identify the strength. We want to trade in that direction and know that with confidence that most of our trades over 70% of them are going to be profitable. Okay, you cannot be 100% profitable. Some days you will be, but losses will, can, and will happen. And you need to learn to deal with that and process that in the grand scheme of things to a situation that doesn't matter because I am following a process that I know unequivocally that it has over 70% success rate. So if I string a couple of losses together, it's not a big deal. I apply my money management formula, and that is all. The P&L is a byproduct of good decision making and good trading and following your rules, not trade to trade, okay? So I've talked about that enough. Now I'm going to show you the process from start to finish, and you're going to see how simple it is. And I don't concern myself with a whole lot of things that a lot of other people do that have even been asked on this thread. Okay, and after we do this, okay, I wanted you to have this foundation and all of these pieces put together so when we do live trading towards the middle of next week, which by the way, we're going to do on uh, YouTube, not through Skype, <clears throat> so I apologize up front if this is an inconvenience for some of you, but the advantage is that on Skype, uh, sorry, on YouTube, there is no limitations to how many people can watch it and it's recorded and you can revisit it over and over again as many times as you need to where on Skype there's you know uh, visual uh, quality issues there's also very, it's very it's also very limited to how many people unless I subscribe and pay a monthly fee which I don't need to do since I don't run trade rooms or anything along those lines so I apologize if this is an inconvenience for you but I need to think of the bigger picture and not the one or two individual that this is going to affect you're still going to be able to watch it and i hope that you're able to participate as well but i will give you a uh, notice it'll probably be towards uh, wednesday or thursday uh, as i need to first learn how to use it and test it and then um and then we'll we'll employ that okay and then after that the following week what i want to do is i want to start getting into some of the harmonic patterns that scott carney came up with and uh and was a pioneer and and show you guys how that can be incorporated into your trading as well. I don't sit around and wait for patterns to complete because I think that's an inefficient use of my time. 
the markets are efficient and liquid and I need to be efficient and liquid in my trading process okay but if a pattern is there or it becomes available during the course of my trading time I will absolutely consider it see how it fits into the overall process of my analysis and if see and make a determination whether it's first trading or not okay so now we're going to go back to a random period of time and uh, the scale in price here we see that is 12:53 p.m. I want to move into the next day I want to take you closer to as, as close as possible to a real trading session this is the next day already so here we're approaching uh, London time we're going to soon be approaching New York I get to my computer somewhere around nine o'clock I usually take my daughter to school in the morning I get here somewhere between 8 45 9 o'clock and then I sit and I do open my charts up but I don't actively start really doing anything because I'm answering your post and you know or checking emails and things along those lines just creating a little bit of busy work while the time trickles on uh, I don't I try not to get involved in the pre-market um, trading because at 930 there's a bunch of orders just sitting there they're gonna take price one way or the other kinda like a news event it's just some volatility enters the market and I do not want to since the pre-market is slower get caught into an entry that doesn't progress and then I'm stuck in a situation where volatility is going to enter the market and I may be down in a position to begin with and I take an unnecessary loss because there were some orders that were just sitting there I call them dumb orders they may or may not mean anything to the order flow and process but it is volatility that enters the market a surge of energy and we need to be mindful of that that is also how I handle news events uh, I do not consider them I do not try to trade them I do become aware of them from the standpoint of a trade management so that I can adjust my position remove risk because of the volatility that's going to be entering the market on news there's not much that moves the Dow um, crude oil inventories moves moves it um, a little bit non farms moves moves it quite a bit it moves everything interest rates the FOMC things like that move the market um, other than that it's not as violent and crazy as Forex is and I usually don't concern myself too much with news events okay so having said that we're entering our closer to our time to get into this market and we want to assess what's going on where are the areas that are critical and what is the expectation now as you can see this was yesterday I do not have any long-term supply and demand support or resistance I do not go to a higher time frame to assess these areas I don't really care about them I don't think the market has long-term memory like that the areas that it's going to react to from a short-term basis are intraday levels which we see here as we see price react to them time and time again when it's uh, above and then when they're below the same situation so that are the area those are the areas that I'm interested in I do not concern myself with too much with the history long-term history I may go to the day before if price moves above this and I don't have anything here I'll come to here and I see I don't have anything above that so I really don't care because if I'm long the market which I should be by then I'm trailing my stop and price will take me out whether you know, when a profit target gets hit or whether the trail takes me out so I don't concern myself with long-term support and resistance what I do concern myself is where price has had a sharp reaction to and this is important because those are where decisions are being made decision to take profit and decisions to sell or buy okay those decisions are being made by big money okay because it takes big money to make a change in direction or to create violence in the market okay now the market seeks equilibrium there is a truth to that okay and while you and I do not have the financial means to weather the storm and to stay in trade the big boys do and they always know that they can sell off a dollar area or a different area where these decisions have been made to get back to their initial entry to get themselves for graceful exits okay so they can play those games we cannot we need to cut our losses short and maximize our gains 
So we do want to be aware of those decisions are being made, not to trade the expectation of a reversal, but hopefully you're in you're trading into that area so you can lock in profit, knowing that price may have a reaction to that area, okay? Or you expect it to break through. So we want to be aware of them because those are the areas that we want to make decisions ourselves or adjust our trade management, okay? So right now we have to understand where are we? Where where is price? Okay. And this is the part that you'll see it's extremely easy to do and it doesn't take a whole lot of processing. Okay. Right now we know that the market made a new structure low from right here on the longer term clear high, clear low. Okay, so our expectation is a lower high and then another new structure low. Okay, assessing the order flow, we see that price is showing a lot of volume in these candles pushing down. Okay. And then we're making significant on the short term projection and that broke down here. Now we have some complex situations happening here. Okay. So price made a short term new structure high from this clear high and this clear low. Okay. But overall we expect this market to do what? Continue to drop. Okay. So now we want to identify what? Our areas of importance, our zones. Okay. And we can see that price has had difficulty getting above this area. We also see that price has had difficulty getting below this area. Okay. So for right now, that's all the areas I really want to identify. Those are the clearest ones that jump out to me. Why do not I do not I want excuse me, I'm sorry. Why do I not want to identify this area? Well, because price is really not going down there. Okay, and I don't want to identify that just yet. As my trading session progresses and these zones may change or morph a little bit, I will adjust them to reflect the most strongest and critical areas. Okay, but right now we have price climbing up. My expectation is for a deep correction as we made a weak new structure low in the clear lows and clear highs. Okay, so we want to identify the best possible area that will be consistent with the deep correction and we see that we have some structure here now to save time I'm just going to draw horizontal lines so somewhere in this general area I would like to see a turning point to the downside now this is still not close enough to my entrance okay but here we see that the market is 917 okay I will not be looking to take a trade in this area uh, at this time okay but this will be a good signal to sell okay what weakens this signal a little bit is the increased momentum and volume that push price above this high so in the short term we may significant uh, projection here to the upside which will tell us that we may get price to come back down here into this general area and just find support again on um, price trying to retest this upper zone nonetheless the expectations for a deep correction which we got Okay, and this gives you enough room to get to a break even, okay, to follow the expectation of a new structure low. So, this is a trade that has risk as there is some momentum and volume here building, okay, but this was a great reaction to what we would expect, okay, and this is a, a, a trade that carries a not a tremendous amount of, uh, of risk and pretty good reward should price continue on with the overall expectation of the new structure low. Okay, so one of the things that we want to do is get to a break even when we get to this area here. So now, I'm sorry, I didn't identify the, the risk. The risk was at the minimum above the 78.6 being that we have tails up here in this demand zone, it would have to be up here. So initially your your stop has to be in this general area. Okay? And it's not fantastic from a risk standpoint considering what you were trading into. But nonetheless, notice that the open occurred and is following the overall global expectation. It usually does that. 
okay however you do not want to put yourself in a situation where you just entered right before the open and trade does not give you an opportunity to get to a uh, risk retrains and volatility enters a market that initially pushes against you not enough to take you out from a structure standpoint but enough to take you out from a stop standpoint okay so now we're here we're locking two points or three points whatever your rules tell you but basically you want to cover the cost of the trade which is the, 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 the commissions okay in the future market and in your forex world whether it's the spread and commission or just a spread whatever it is that you cover those costs when you get to your break even okay so in this particular situation we expecting we are expecting a new structure low price got past this initial area pretty good it tried to find support there it wasn't able to okay so that feels pretty good okay and we should get some continuation here okay right now we're at a risk free position okay what we would like to see is some rotation again in this area Okay, we do have rotation here again. Let's see if the bears can take price lower now. Expectation is still a new structure low. Okay, now that we got past these lows, we can lock in profit. Okay, what I like to do is I take a swing that if we're going to correct here, I take my stop and now I lock in above the 382 this was a trailing system that was not put together by me but by one of my students believe it or not had the amazing uh, foresight to understand the power of Fibonacci's and maximize trailing capabilities of, of these uh, swings okay we'll talk more about this particular trailing strategy when um, when we get to specific trade management okay now my initial profit target is down here I also want to take an extension and see where that 127 is because that is my first level of exhaustion and what I would expect price to get to on a break of those lows okay nonetheless I'm protected okay and don't know if I would have survived that but definitely would not have survived it now so in this particular trade we got taken out for 57 points okay and that is an acceptable um, trade for me now what is our expectation well overall on this general order flow we've made a very strong or I should say fairly strong projection we really didn't get the one-to-one -one. okay should we expect price to come down and make to one yes the expectations for a lower high and a new structure low we know that this greater one-to-one -one terminates in this area we know that the shorter one-to-one -one terminates in this general area so we should expect price at the very least to visit this area okay so we would expect price to come back okay into the zone which we have clearly pre-identified We'll extend it forward. Do we need to adjust it a little bit? We can. Okay. We don't want these zones to become so thick that it becomes difficult to handle or manage or make decisions because they're so wide. This one's getting borderline. I don't want to make it any wider than this, so I'm not going to include some of these tails. I just want to include some of the closes become important. I will tailor them a little bit to help me find the best area okay so now we see that we have another rotation in price here okay and I don't like the fact that we have some pretty good volume pushing price up and when the bears tried to come in they found some weakness but then again I'm in an area of support so right now I would expect price to continue to drop so I would consider taking this trade my risk would have to be at least above here if not above here okay so I am going to initially push put it above the 78.6 I do not want to risk so much on this okay I see that I have some short-term structure areas here I'm slightly above that let me give it a little bit more room okay and this is where I want to now assess this take this line 
project it forward and say that my 127 now from the overall is here my 138 is here I got here so I got a general area here the price should at the very least retest these lows okay now price has initially went in favor some volume started growing to the upside here so I'm particularly concerned about this case I'm not happy with what I see but nothing needs to change okay for my expectation to invalidate or to change price would have to close above this okay and that is just hasn't happened yet I'm not particularly happy that I am deeper than I expected but I'm still within this area of resistance and that my stop is above that it definitely makes a lot of sense and it needs to be above that area okay price is trying to cooperate now nothing's changed price is finally moving in favor retest these lows get to a break even okay my initial profit target I'm gonna put it down here I have price acceleration okay I have a pretty good expectation for price to get at the very least down here I'm gonna put it at the 171 because I'm gonna rely more on my uh, 161 so I'm gonna rely more on my trail okay now I see that the buyers are trying to come in I'm gonna draw my fib of the uh, swing I'm gonna use this clear high here okay now not only did I get to a break even but I'm in a position where I can lock in some profit for the day price is continuing on down so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a swing wait for the correction there what I want to do is lock in profit above the 38.2 extend this further down let me bring this up extend this further down to the 200 we're looking for extended targets and we're letting our trail do all the work there I got taken out so now in this particular day we had two particular trading opportunities this one was for 74 so here it is we, we traded for about an hour now 9 30 to 10 30 we have two trades in both of them were winners following the expectation and order flow identifying the areas where price should come into the market and what areas should hold and take two very good trading opportunities that didn't pose a whole lot of risk this trade never went against me this trade did go against me but it only went against me this is the highest point 18 points so it doesn't always work out this way but most of the time it does and you're going to identify and, and time these trades with a tremendous amount of accuracy so that if you do have price go against you it usually isn't that bad okay and some days no matter what you do you're just not going to be um, productive enough to do that and trades are going to go against you and you're going to suffer some pain pain is part of the game okay but you have to learn to deal with it okay so in this particular situation we've taken two trades already today notice I'm not chasing every single swing I'm not chasing the short-term motor flow okay we're managing these trades we're trailing these trades in a very effective way that allows us not to give too much back to the market and also allows us to maximize extended target probabilities and I'm very thankful to Antonio for putting in all of the work and, and having the incredible vision to to see this I have changed my trading uh, my trailing strategy uh, to this very effective way and we'll talk about about it more in detail when we talk about uh, trade management okay so at this particular point okay price is looking to correct we've got taken out so now we're in a position to re-enter this we didn't give too much back to the market on the trail and our expectation is for a weak pullback right into an area structure we had huge momentum increase we had a huge projection we should have small depth right so what we want to identify is where is that 382 
and where is that structure area and we do have a little bit of structure here so now we can take our rectangle say that we have a little area here that interests us okay okay and now we have an area here now do I want my wrist to be all the way up here no I want my wrist to be just above this rectangle because if we are right and we had all of this strength coming down and all those projection even though we came back 100% of this minor swing we should not get price to move above this and we want to take a trade that puts us you know it, it got us to the 382 so that's acceptable I do not want to incur all this risk and give some of these profits back but I do want to be able to engage the market and participate in another potential great move to the downside so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter should have entered here but there were weak signals so it was just selling pressure this is rotation and decision is right here okay my risk is going to be just above that I do not want to give this trade a whole lot of room as we are starting to correct deeper our depth is starting to gain a little bit even on the short term so we may have a situation here where the bulls may be looking to enter this market and have a more substantial and deep correction to the upside I don't want to go through that pain if that's the case but I do want to participate with a small amount of risk if price is going to continue on with the expectation boom and that's acceptable okay so at this point I'm getting close to quitting time and I'm happy with my day so I don't need to be looking for any more trading opportunities and in this particular case I gave back 28 points to the market okay so we'll, we'll, well, we'll keep that in red so let me add this up real quick for you 57 points plus 74 points equals 131 minus 28 we had 103 points okay on on uh, the trading activity today okay that's all uh, for now we're going to see this process in more detail in with more patience when we do the live trading so if we have time to talk about it and we see the candles uh, streaming live and really talk about the bar by bar in greater detail I didn't want this video to become uh, long I want to try to keep them around 30 minutes and that's pretty much where we're at um, I hope you see the process I hope it has value uh, I'm sure some of these areas need to be revisited but we're gonna do this live uh, in a live trading uh, way so it allows you the opportunity to grasp it and embrace it slowly and practice it live as, as we do them live okay that's all I have. Please comment, post your, uh, your comments, and we'll talk to you soon.